Hey guys, thanks for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I took this photo of this Camaro SS and turned it into this. So let's get started. So before I begin actually showing you the breakdown of the layer by layer, I just wanted to uh, talk about the original photo. This was actually the photo that I took originally and uh, there was a lot of post-production work involved in this original photo as well. I was quite happy with it for quite a long time and um, but I, I decided that I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, I feel like the car has a menacing look to it so I wanted to give it a lot more uh, oomph I guess if you could say. So I took this original photo and I made it into the composite which I'm going to talk about right now. And I'm going to go through all the layers one by one with you guys and kind of show you how I went about making this. Just an FYI, this is for users who are pretty familiar with Photoshop. That being said, a lot of the tools and a lot of the techniques that I'm using in this tutorial today, walkthrough, um, are uh, pretty simple to use. So if you can follow along, if not, then I will definitely make uh, more tutorials down the road which are more oriented towards beginners as well. Okay guys, so this is the original image. I'm just gonna shut the layer off. And here is the, the composite. I've kept all the layers in a folder here. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut all the layers off completely. And I'm going to show you right from the beginning exactly how I made this image. So the first layer that comes into play is the background layer. I found this image online. I wanted, again, to, uh, to, to find some cool lightning uh, and thunder found that this image suited the car quite well, so um, I chose it. The first thing I did to the actual image of the lightning is that um, I desaturated the image. I felt it was a little bit too purple and it didn't match the, the overall look that I was going for. So I just desaturated a little bit. You can do that by going into this little icon here, which is a uh, new adjustment layer, and you can go to hue and saturation, which is exactly what I did and I just desaturated it, that's about it. Next thing I did is, uh, I'm just gonna shut the background off actually. Um, I cropped the car out from the original background because I no longer needed uh, any of this background back here. I still wanted to keep the ground because it the car is, uh, is sitting on it, it's got that shadow in here. I'm gonna show you guys later on how I use the different uh, texture at the bottom, uh, but I kept the ground. I basically cut out the car just like this with just the um, with just the ground and the car. And I did that using the, the pen tool. I'm gonna do a tutorial down the road exactly on how to use what, how to use the pen tool. But uh, that's essentially what I did is just cut out the car, and then I, I cut out the back window as well because you could see the original background in the back, and that's that's the car layer right there. So, so far we have the three initial layers. Now I'm gonna show you guys what I did with the ground. <clears throat> In this case scenario, I didn't like the type of texture that the original uh, pavement had. It had more of a quality that would be found in the parking lot. So I decided to change that up by uh, adding a new texture. Uh, in this case scenario, I just found, I had an image of um, a texture of a ground uh, asphalt that I basically overlaid over top of this image uh, at a 48% opacity. <clears throat> and then to darken it up, I applied, uh, just to darken up the texture, I applied a color overlay on top of that. And the way you do that is you double click into the layer itself, you click on color overlay, and then you get to choose uh, whatever color you, you like. Uh, in this case scenario, I chose the opacity on that 40% as well, and overall opacity 48% of the actual texture. So you can see the difference here. It's subtle, but it makes a big difference in my opinion. Uh, it, uh, it's more cohesive with the overall look. Next up, as I was building this image, um, I wanted to give this car a bit of a more shadow on the left-hand side of the picture versus the right-hand side where the lightning is showing up. Uh, and there's many different ways you can do this, but the way I did it in this scenario is, uh, I can actually just go through this again. 
Um, I actually duplicated the car layer. Let me just isolate it uh, so you guys just can see it. I duplicated the car layer on its own. Let's just turn off the original one. And then I just quickly just cut it out with the lasso tool. And I didn't have to be precise in this scenario because um, just around the wheel actually. There you go. Um, so I hit Command J just to duplicate or uh, duplicate that selection. I deleted, deleted the original layer. So now I have the car on its own layer here, isolated. And what I did is I double clicked into the layer. I clicked color overlay. I chose black. So now the car is doesn't look great, but um, there's a black overlay on top of the car. And then what I did is I applied a layer mask to it. I went down to the gradient tool and I feather, feathered it out, uh, sort of something like this, actually using the linear feather from what I remember. Let's see the original. It was something like this, I believe. That's closer. So that doesn't look great right now if you actually turn on the rest of the layers. But um, what I did then is whatever elements I still wanted highlighted, I actually clicked on the mask itself. I selected the brush tool and made sure it's set to black. Just put the hardness all the way down, set the pro pro appropriate size. And then I started brushing in whatever elements I thought should retain some of those details. But as you can see, that now the car appears to be more in the shadow on this side versus this side. That's how basically I went around to making that sort of effect. So I'm just gonna delete this layer, put the asphalt texture back on, and then show you guys this is exactly what, it doesn't look pretty, but this is what I ended up with. On and off. And uh, it's I turned it down to about 83%. It doesn't have to be exactly that, but this is what I just basically felt looked good. But that's basically how I went about making that effect there. Next up, I wasn't really happy with how you can see right into the interior of the car. So I wanted to darken up the, the actual windshield. And the way I did that is I drew a actual shape, uh, as you can see with the pen tool, right around the windshield area. And I colored it black at 100%. And then I applied a layer mask to it. I'm just gonna disable the layer mask so you can see that it's solid black. When I enable it, uh, you can see it sort of fades, it fades out at the top a little bit. Uh, it gives it that uh, more realistic look. It's basically going from totally solid at the bottom to a little bit more transparent at the top. So you can see when I have the layer mask selected with this tool here, when I drag it up, you can change the way you can control the amount of opacity that goes through. Uh, so I'm just gonna go back to the way I had it. Um, there you go, so that's the way I had it. And then on top of that, I wanted to uh, reflect some of this uh, nice uh, cloud texture from the top. And the way I did that, as you can see here, I basically went, chose the, the background, let's just rasterize this layer. Um, I made sure that this layer at the bottom is selected, the, the, the background layer with the sky. I chose a particular part of that image using the, uh, the selection tool. I dragged over top of the, the part that I wanted uh, in sort of a rough shape of the windshield. And then I hit Command J to duplicate that selection on its own layer. So let's just uh, bring it up. So um, you would have to desaturate it again because it's now it's above the hue and saturation adjustment.
but basically now here we have the new layer and then what I did I drag it dragged it over top of the car I selected the the windshield layer that I drew earlier on and by ho holding on down to command I clicked on it and it selected the shape of the windshield I selected back to the layer with the sky and again, I hit Command J to extract that selection on its own layer. And then I delete, deleted the original layer. So now you can see I have the, the shape of the windshield with the texture of the sky. And then I played around with the hue and saturation just to match the, uh, the rest of the tone of the, uh, the saturation of the image. So I just, let's just, Bring it down a little bit. Oops, playing with the wrong layer. Let's just bring it down a little bit. Just a little bit like that. And then if I go back to, and then I turn it down to 68%. Roughly around there. And then what I also did is went into the levels and played around with just the shadows. The highlights and the midtones. And I probably reduced the saturation even further. Something like that. I must have chosen a different part of the sky, but you can see how I kind of made that effect. You can also play around with it by uh, adding a layer mask to that layer and then kind of feathering it out as well. So it's a bit more realistic and not so hard around the edges. But basically that's how I went around to making that sort of effect. So it shows reflections of the sky in the windshield. So I'm just going to delete the, the layer that I just made and turn the one that I actually made originally. Next up, I wanted to make the background layer and the ground layer a lot more seamless. And this is what I ended up with. Um, so what I did there basically, I'll just zoom out, is I drew a black rectangle. I applied a layer mask to it, chose the gradient tool chose the reflected gradient pattern. And then just right from the center, I drew, uh, dragged the mouse out just like this, just enough like this. And as you can see, I had to keep it in front of the car uh, layer. Otherwise, if I put it behind, it would end up behind the ground layer. So I kept it in front of the, the car layer. And then in order to get rid of the black on the car, I chose the layer the layer mask, took the uh, the brush tool, chose black, and started brushing it out. Make it larger just for the sake of time. Not going to be super precise. But as you can see, this is exactly what I did here. And then I wasn't happy with the amount of uh, the, the black that I was getting here. So I essentially went in and I just duplicated the layer. twice and as you can see I didn't do it a perfect job this time but uh, this is essentially what I did in order to achieve that effect so I'm just gonna delete the two layers that I just made up and then turn on the original layer so there's one and there's two so we're moving along quite nicely um, what I did next was um, I wanted to bring out the highlights in the the lightning in here and brighten it brighten this image up in this area here so as you can see this is what i ended up with and essentially what this is is i drew a white circle and then i applied a blur gaussian blur to it i'm just gonna rasterize it first way 
probably at around 150 pixels. And then I applied a overlay blend mode to it. So you can see kind of brightens that image up. It's not the exact effect that I did in the original image, but this is essentially what I did. And I duplicated this layer twice. So I'm just going to delete this and go back to showing the original two layers. And what I did next is I wanted to add a sort of like a headlight glow coming from the headlights right at the ground here. Uh, as you can see, this is what it looks like. And if I open this folder up, it's actually layered with four different layers, essentially all duplicated sort of. And I can explain exactly how I did that. Essentially what it is, um, I drew a sort of like an oval shape in white. And again, same sort of technique. Um, let's just bring it down to here. Um, again, I applied a, um, first I rasterized it, and then I applied a Gaussian blur to it, but much less, much less than before. So, so it appears natural. I sort of layered it. So the first layer would be have ha, would have more of a Gaussian blur to appear more spread out. So let's just say around here. And then I applied a layer mask to it. And where the car kind of sort of meets the ground, um, I brushed the glow out because that's not where the glow would appear. It wouldn't appear underneath the car. It would sort of appear in front of the car. I'm just doing a rough job, which is kind of showing you guys kind of how I did that. So that was the first kind of layer. And then on top of that, I basically drew the exact same shape again using white. Maybe just made it a little thinner this time around. And then again, I went to, um, I rasterized it again. Oops, sorry guys. I rasterized it again. And then I applied a Gaussian blur to it, but this time it would be a bit sharper. And again, um, I would make sure that by applying a layer mask to it, I would make sure that the glow doesn't appear underneath the car. And what you can actually do in order to paint a straight line, you can actually hold down shift as you're painting it. And it won't, even if you're moving your mouse up and down, it will keep it in a straight line like this. So essentially this is what I did for the headlight glow. All in all, um, I ended up with four different layers. I can kind of quickly show you guys each layer by layer. Uh, so that's the first layer, then another one, then another one, then another one. And then I also applied a soft light and a hard light um, blend mode to these to make them appear more realistic as well. Next up, I wanted to add a little bit of depth to the picture. And to do that, I decided to add a little bit of smoke fog effect to this. And there's many different ways you can um, either draw your own smoke uh, fog or you can import uh, a PNG of smoke. In this case, that's what I did. I will actually have a tutorial later uh, on in the future where I will actually show you guys how you can draw your own smoke or fog effects using the brush tool that's, uh, that's in Photoshop. But for now, I actually just used a uh, an image of smoke that I found online. Um, so I brought it in and I basically positioned it uh, to wherever I wanted. In this case, it's in front of the car right at the ground. And then I applied a screen blend mode to it. As you can see, when I go back to normal, it's sort of, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't look proper at all. So. Uh, if you go back to overlay, oh, if you go back to uh, screen mode, um, it looks much better. But then I wasn't happy with the um, sort of the color balance on the, the smoke. It was too, 
uh, it didn't have any color to it. So what I did there is I applied a color balance to it. As you can see, it's more cohesive with the overall image. And in order to apply the color balance just to that smoke layer, I'll just go back. Um, I'll show you guys how exactly how I did that. Um, what you want to do is you want to go down here and choose color balance and it's going to end up on top of this layer. And then what you want to do in order just to isolate it into that specific layer. So it just applies it to that one layer. You will want to make uh, sure that it's uh, a clipping mask. So you right click on that color balance layer and then you say create clipping mask and it will just isolate it to the, the, to the, the layer that's right just below it and everything else will stay as is. And I'm just going to double tap into the color balance in here. And as you can see, uh, the midtones, I brought up the blues. And then I'm not sure if I left the shadows as is and the highlights, probably. Uh, so, yeah, basically, what I did with the midtones is I just applied more blue. So it's more cohesive with the overall, uh, the rest of the image. So, we're almost done here. Uh, a couple more adjustments, basically, and we're finished with this image. Uh, next up, I wanted to bring out a little bit more purple into the ground down here. So in order to achieve that effect, I actually applied a photo filter. And in order to do that, again, you go down to the layer adjustment and you choose photo filter. And in this case scenario, when I turn it on, you guys can tell that the ground becomes more blue. Um, when you double click into it, I chose a specific color that I wanted. I put the density up all the way to 100%. And then I brought down just the opacity to about 67%. And then I also feathered it out. So it's only applicable to the ground layer. Uh, if you can see, if I disable the layer mask, it applies it to the entire image. Um, I'm going to enable it again. So again, to do that, you click on the layer mask, you choose the gradient tool. You want to make sure you have the, the first one here selected black to white, and then you sort of drag your mouse. However you want to position. So if you want to do the sky, that's more blue, you drag it down. And then if you want to do it the opposite way, you just drag it up. So essentially, that's how I ended up uh, making the ground more blue. Let's just go back to the way it was before. Okay, and then um, I wanted to darken up the, the top of the image a little bit, kind of like a graduated filter in Lightroom. And in order to do that, I, again, I drew a black rectangle, as you can see. Um, and then I feathered it out using the layer mask and the same method I, as, as I just used for the, uh, for, for the photo filter. And then I just kind of reduced the opacity to 53%. Uh, just to just to basically darken up the, the image at the top. But again, it's subjective to however you want it, but this is the way I wanted to make it look like. So that's what I did. And then next thing I did is uh, applied a color balance to the entire image um, just to give it a bit more of a dramatic look. Uh, if I double click into it, again, you go down to layer adjustment and then choose color balance. So if I go down into here. Um, as you can see with the midtones, um, I pushed it more towards the cyans. With the shadows, I pushed it more towards the reds. And with the highlights, again, I pushed it more towards cyans again. And if I toggle it on and off, you can see it's quite, it's quite different, a bit more dramatic. And then finally, um, I applied a levels effect to it again from the same menu. Uh, there's an array of different options here. So I chose levels. And then I think what I did in here is I basically just upped the, uh, the highlights on here. So I just move this out of the way. If I go back to the way it was normal, I just kind of brought it up just a little bit just to make that lightning strike a little more dramatic as well. So here we have the final image. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this Photoshop walkthrough. I'm gonna try and pump out as much as, as much content as possible. Feel free to uh, leave any comments or questions in the comments section. Uh, and if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe. So until next time guys, see you later.